Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back to Memphis, Tennessee. Pokemon Regional Championships trading card game is the variation that we are playing today. I'm Kirk Dupes, next to Bay, alongside John Edward Kettler, a.k.a. Calchexis, and we've got a pretty interesting matchup here. We've seen a decent amount of Buzzwool, but this is a little bit of a different variant. Yeah, so um, this is table one. Both players That's are 5-0. Right. Terrific start to their tournament. Um, you're going to be seeing on the left-hand side of your screen Alex Kreckler playing Buzzwool. Um, as you just mentioned, right side of your screen, uh, first time we're seeing it on camera, Rayquaza Vikavolt. That's right, and despite the fact that Rayquaza has been a really popular deck this whole tournament, this is actually the first time we've seen it on stream all weekend long, where walking around the first couple of rounds, there were tons of people playing this deck without a doubt. Vikavolt being the energy acceleration method for the deck, being able to get out a whole bunch of energy. Rayquaza GX itself being its own source of energy acceleration. Lots of energy on the board very quickly. But on the other hand, it's a pretty popular deck. It has a target on its back, so a lot of people have been able to deal with it successfully. But here it is at 5-0 and in the Memphis Regional Championship. Rare candy deck's going to rare candy. That's so, right. Uh, it looks like Andrew Martin finding himself on the positive side of variance today. Alex Kreckler playing a Buzzwool GX Lycanroc deck of the days of old that we saw kind of take over the back half of last season. Yeah, and it's kind of incredible to think about how fast Pokemon moves right now, where when Kirk's saying the old days, he really means like half a year ago, less right, than half exactly, a year ago. Exactly. And that's the cool thing between format rotations, taking certain broken, powerful cards out of the format, and then new cards emerging, new decks emerging, is that we have this constant change. But some things old... Buckle up, again. buckle in. Here we go. We are down to the table. These players are ready to go, squaring up those prizes. As I mentioned, Alex Kreckler with that Buzzwool Lycanroc deck of the days of yore on the left-hand side of your screen. Andrew Martin going to try and stormy wins Tempest GX uh, his way to the finish line with Rayquaza and Vikavolt. That's right. Energy ablazing. And with Andrew starting us out, he's got at least one grubbin to be able to keep the setup flowing. Absolutely. We see uh, a Rainbow Rare Tapu Lele GX come down, a Wonder Tag ability triggered, and he's going to get himself a supporter card, any one he wants. We're going to see what the flavor of choice is here, turn one, game one of round six. And it is a Stevens Resolve. John, what can that do for this deck? Well, by searching your deck for three cards to put in your hand in exchange for ending your turn, Effectively, what you're doing is you're guaranteeing that you get out that turn two stage two. So we've been talking about this time and time again, the importance for these bigger evolution decks, these stage two evolution decks, to get out their evolution by the second turn. Because when you do that, everything else falls into place. You get that turn two strong charge. You get more energy on the board quicker, and you're dealing damage. So there's a little bit of a chain reaction that happens by doing that. Now that instantly puts pressure on Alex to have some sort of response to it. I am looking at the list and I don't really see a solid answer to searching your deck for three cards to put in your hand on your first turn. Looks like Steven's resolve will go unimpeded, but now we're on Alex's turn. Acrobike pitches a fighting energy and now we're doing an ultra ball, pitching an ultra ball and another fighting energy. I'm going to look through his deck and see what he can uh, cobble together here to get a setup going. Yeah, but that's part of the game is figuring out what's in your prizes so that you even know what you're able to cobble together in the first place. Seeing what is in those all-important prize cards, making sure that you can have access to all the parts that you need. Looking down the line, I mean, there are a lot of one-of copies that Alex is running, Diancy Prism Star. You can only run one copy of a Prism Star, but adding that big damage to your fighting Pokemon, one copy of Orin Guru, and... Essentially, if you're without one of those, then your options are a little more limited. Just going to jump in here, John. Great turn from Alex. Ultra Ball gets him a, a Slugmo, which is <laughs> going to give him that card selection engine. Uh, Brooklet Hill grabs Buzzwool GX. Fighting Energy comes down, plays the switch. Rockruff back to the bench. That Jet Punch now live in the active. And a Cynthia as the last card in hand to draw him six. Alex has to feel good about that sequence. Yeah, but I bet he would feel better if he didn't know that a turn two Vigable was coming in just a little bit. Along with just about anything, he might Andrew might need to be able to get that Vigable out of the active position. That's going to be really important, too, because once he evolves, it's going to be fighting week. That is a, a very good point. You have to think Andrew, when he gets three cards out of his deck, found his way to get his... Uh, 
his strong charge get up and going for turn two, but also to get that Vigavolt out of the active and get a more uh, more suited attacker to face down these fighting Pokemon. Oh yeah, absolutely. And a good advantage here though is for Alex, his saving grace is it he's got 190 HP. So while Andrew does have basically everything that he needs for the next turn, his saving grace, Alex's that is, is that his math is imperfect for Vigavolt Rayquaza, where Vigavolt Rayquaza thrives off of multiples of 30, so 180, 210, things like that. But when you've got 190, it's a whole level, whole additional level, an additional threshold where Andrew's going to have to dig that much deeper, and he might have to lose some resources in exchange for that. Very interesting sequence of events. Rare Candy Vigavolt coming down. Uh, strong charge to the Rayquaza. I do not believe Andrew elected to use Stormy Winds when that Rayquaza came down to the bench. Another Grubbin there as well. Quick strong charge puts a lightning and a grass energy on to that Rayquaza. We have a Dragon Break ready to go. Guzma on the Slugma. And Andrew finds himself a knockout on his second turn of the game. Yeah, and I love the conservative play here. So one thing that Andrew could have done, which might have not ended up being the correct course of actions, is he could have done Stormy was to be able to look at the top three, discard the top three, discard an energy, or attach an energy in his discard to the Rayquaza. But instead, he just opted for the easy knockout, knowing that, okay, I can go ahead and wait one turn, I can get more energy, I can get my knockout later. As you mentioned, very solid conservative play. Gets the knockout regardless. Over to Alex Kreckler. Drops immediately. Rescue Stretcher buys back that Slugma. Gets it on the bench. Brooklet Hill for Alex is going to get him a second uh, Buzzwool GX onto the bench here. And uh, what is Alex looking to accomplish on this turn to, uh, to really stem uh, Andrew's game plan? Well, it really just comes down to what's in his hand right now. I think I saw a, a Beast Energy meaning that he has a lot of options. And, hey, what do you know? We're getting that 120 right there. So he has an instant knockout option right now. So Beast Energy only attached to Beast Energies for the Rainbow Effect, but you get the plus 30 damage to the Buzzwool GX. And so, hey, that's perfect math for him right now. And uh, with that Lycanroc GX, using Bloodthirsty Eyes, able to get that Vikavolt back into the active. Um and take a knockout, as you mentioned, with Jet Punch and soften up that Rayquaza for a future turn. Yeah, now one thing I'm curious about is if the Stevens Resolve play from the first turn was so well planned that he knew that he was going to have the out. He knew that the Vigavolt was going to get knocked out and have an answer. It looks like he didn't have that many great cards even with the three that he chose. So he's going to have to do some fishing here, going to have to maybe get his Super Rod out, maybe cast his little net, try to get something real solid in a bit, but... If he does not hit the energy that he needs, then Alex is going to be threatening a knockout next turn. That is a very good point. Andrew does play that Cynthia gets himself six cards, and they got to be six good ones if he wants to keep up the pressure that he initiated in the second turn of, uh, of the game for, for himself. Mr. Martin eyeing up an Ultra Ball. Oh, yeah. He, I mean, you can tell just by his body language right there. He's totally eyeing it. He's trying to figure out everything, trying to figure out how much it's going to cost him in order to play that Ultra Ball. And he's like, no, let's go ahead and just hit the Buzzwell for some damage, even if I fall behind. That's okay. He really needs to, to get himself uh, prepared for what might come next. That Buzzwool is one energy away from being able to use its more high-powered attacks rather than that spread poke jet punch. Um, Alex goes ahead to Brooklet Hills for another Rock Ruff, which means if, it's un if it goes unchecked, we have a Lycanroc GX coming down the pike for another Bloodthirsty Eyes, maybe targeting down uh, perhaps another Vikavolt next turn. Oh, yeah, although... I just as much like the ability to be able to go and just attempt to score a knockout on the Rayquaza where he's going, Andrew's going to lose energy. He's going to have to essentially try to recompose his setup and move from there. And a nice thing about doing that is that, okay, he's actually still got momentum going in his favor because as long as he hits a beast ring next turn, assuming that the Buzzwell GX gets knocked out, his opponent will have just enough prizes to trigger Beast Ring item card letting you search your deck for two basic energy to attack to one of your Ultra Beast Pokemon. But the downside is you can only play it when your opponent has three or four prizes left. So maybe kind of wanting to push Andrew into a corner, attempt to score a knockout, and trigger his own knockout in return. 
That's a very good point. We see Alex uh, going through his deck here. Does get the Mag Cargo online after the Cynthia uh, uses Smooth Over. We're going to have one very, very solid card coming to the top of the deck. One that Alex for sure needs, uh, or at least feels like he does. Yeah, that's right. And another great thing about Mag Cargo with its Smooth Over ability is that even if you aren't exploding with that ability you are setting yourself up for the next turn so it rewards a lot of careful foresight it lets you essentially orchestrate each of your turns to a certain extent there's some things you can't predict you can't control 100 percent your opponent's hand but you can at least guarantee one card that you will get next turn and that's huge absolutely we see just a knuckle impact on that rayquaza taking a knockout here uh, Andrew using Brooklet Hill. I believe that's the first time of the game we've seen him uh, go ahead and use that to get some information out of his deck. And he's going to see uh, what the next steps are in terms of where do we go from here. Yeah, and that's a pretty cool approach to being able to figure out what your prizes are in a game where people diff have different methods. And one method you can do is you can search for your most critical cards without having to expend any time at all and then just figuring it out as you go throughout the game not I mean it's not necessarily the ultimate best practice in the world but at the same time you know it gets the job done in 99 situations out of 100 absolutely we see an ultra ball for Tapu Lele wonder tag going to go ahead and trigger grab a Volkner Volkner as we saw earlier in that round with James Arnold gets you an item card and a lightning energy got rare candy mm -hmm. lightning energy evolves into uh, Vika Volt and now we have our first strong charge with this new Vika Volt that has just become active. Oh, yeah, and having a way to search your deck for a rare candy is critical in these Stage 2 decks. And unlike the game that we saw with James Arnold, where he ran the single copy of Lightning Energy, it's just a little splashing. Remember that Lightning Energy is an integral part of the Vika Volt Rayquaza deck, so it's actually got a lot of utility in being able to search out a Lightning Energy. Absolutely. That Tapu Lele getting a Lightning Energy off the... Uh off the strong charge, mm -hmm. uh, able to take a knockout with energy drive. And uh, Kreckler, as we see, he literally just flipped a beast ring off the top of his deck, clearly what he smoothed over for, yeah. and uh, gets two fighting energy on that buzz wheel real quick. And uh, that new buzz, ready to knuckle impact, ready to absorption GX if he wants it. Mm -hmm. And then all, this, all the meanwhile, he's able to set up a GX attack for the next turn if he wants to, where that requires is within range of knocking out this turn with just Knuckle Impact. He can set up one of his bench Pokemon to be a threat. And there's that second Beast Ring, and it's important to note, Alex is only running two copies, so his odds of getting that first one were 100% because of the smooth over. And hey, what do you know, because he's running Acro Bike, it was 100% that he was gonna get the second Beast Ring. So even though he only runs two, he was able to use them for maximum effect because he chained his plays the right way. Absolutely, perhaps, uh the 2-2 two, two, my cargo slugma line the first time uh, the first cut made was two beast rings from four to two because he knows now he has an engine to find them when he needs them we see a uh, fighting energy the attachment for turn uh going on the lichen rock gx and taking a knockout with knuckle yeah. impact and now alex is just down to one prize card with a suited up buzzwool and tons of options going into his next turn andrew on the other hand Decides to pack yep. it up, pack it in. Let's go to game two. Good call. Good call. I mean, once you read the writing on the wall, remember it's 50 minutes. That's precious little time to finish up the three games. And both of these players are in a pretty good spot for the tournament. But remember, the goal for at least most people here is to win the tournament. And so ideally you want to try to avoid getting a tie if you can. It's a less efficient result because in these best two out of three tournaments, big regional championships, Wins are given three points in order to advance as far as calculating your score. Ties are given one point and losses are given zero. So as far as basic arithmetic goes, if both of these players end up with ties, then it's a less efficient result than if somebody wins. So that's a, that's a very good point. And a win in this round for either player will put them at 18 points and effectively a soft lock for day two at that 19-point oh, yeah. threshold. Oh, yeah, and that's the interesting thing about this new 19-point threshold that's come about. So like we were talking about, three points for a win, one for a tie. These players have 15 points. So if somebody wins, they're going to have 18 points, right? And we still have three rounds left in the day. So 
if you're aiming to win the tournament, you want to try to get as many points as you can because these points carry over into the second day of play. So if you finish with nine wins, that's 27 points. That gives you a great shot of just automatically marching into top eight. But at the same time, even if something bad happens in those last three rounds, you're probably going to end up with at least one tie at some point. If it isn't an intentional draw, an agreed draw, it could be a natural draw. And so you're giving yourself a huge buffer to at least guarantee that you continue playing and you get into those important point zones for championship points and cash prizes. Absolutely. We are off in game two. Andrew Martin going first. Did have to mulligan. Krekel getting extra cards, starting with that Deancey Prism that we didn't quite see game one. And a full art Pokemon That's fan club, right. I believe, looking really good yeah, there. Yeah, you guys should see me right now because I had to kind of tilt my head to figure that out. But, yep, it's a Pokemon fan club. Uh, search in your deck for any two basic Pokemon to put into your hand. We lost a really important supporter search card in the form of Bridget, which was a card that let you search your deck for three Pokemon to put onto your bench. Three non-EX Pokemon to put onto your bench. And we basically got the same effect. Thank you, Sierra, for putting up that non-full art Pokemon fan club. Very clear text. Gives you a good idea of what it does. It basically does the same thing to a certain extent, but it's not quite as explosive as, say, that turn one Steven's Resolve. That Pokemon fan club, big fans of Grubbin and Tapu Lele. Grubbin hits the bench, Tapu Lele in Andrew Martin's hand so he can get himself a supporter next turn. Maybe that Volkner uh, that we saw last game. However, we are over to Alex, and he leads off like he did last time. Acro Bike. Choice Band goes into the hand. Baby Buzz hitting the bin. Ultra Ball pulled to the front. And let's see where Alex goes from here. He yeah. does have the switch in hand as well. So if he can get to uh, his uh, Buzzwool GX, Jet Punch is up and on it. And we didn't get a chance to see this actually be used in the last game, but he just discarded his single copy of Energy Switch, which lets you move a basic energy from one of your Pokemon to another. That's got a lot of utility, a lot of little special tricks involved where there are situations where your opponent will be surprised to see some sort of knockout potential. So we've talked about this before. Certain decks have lost Max Elixir, the item card that lets you attach more basic fighting energy, basic energy, what, what have you, to accelerate your setup. Energy Switch kind of smooths that over, pun intended. My man, he's doing it again game two. Rinse, repeat game one. Ultra Ball, Rock Ruff, had the Buzzwool GX in hand, plays it down. Fighting Energy, Choice Band, Switch, last card in hand, Cynthia again. Finding yeah. himself six more cards, and Andrew's got to be looking. He's like, I had to play a cold fan club and then do nothing else but attach a Lightning Energy. Kreckler smashing cards onto the board and trying to smash his way through Andrew Martin's Rayquazas to get himself to a 6-0 start. It might not be that bad, though, depending on what follow-up we've got from Andrew for the next turn, where I think I saw a Vikavolt floating around in there and an Ultra Ball as well. So at the very least, the worst-case scenario is that Andrew has his turn two set up. But is that turn two set up enough? I'm not really sure about that, especially when Alex is applying this early pressure the way that he is. We do see uh, an Acro Bike... Um, Alex grabbing uh, the nest ball instead of the fighting energy off the acro bike, getting that slugma going, card selection going to be imperative. We saw it work wonders with that B-string mid-game in game one. Uh, Alex says, I'll stop for now. I think I'm good. Jet punch, 60 on your Rayquaza, 30 on the bench. Over to you. Andrew Martin. Wonder Tag, Rainbow Rare, Tapu Lele, GX coming to the bench. Finds a Volkner as we discussed. Are we going to be able to piece this together? Rare Candy, Lightning Energy. Uh, I think we have a Vika Volt on our horizon I here, think, John. I think we got a Vika Volt flowing around in that there hand, buddy. We're going to have our energy flowing. It's probably not going to be a knockout, but it's going to at least set him up for the next couple turns. Nice little, uh, niddle, nice little feint there. Uh, move the damage off the Grubbin. Rare candy evolved the other one. Winking a gun, gotcha. Uh, maybe seeing what he did, what happened last time with that Vika Volt that had the damage on him when he evolved it. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of got eaten up by that uh, Beast Energy Jet Punch. Yeah, very well said. That could have easily happened this game. Probably wasn't thinking about it in the moment, but when he was playing, he caught himself. And that's really what it comes down to. As long as you're making the right play, then it doesn't really matter exactly kind of what happens leading into it. Great point. Andrew playing down Ultra Ball, discarding a Grass and a Lightning Energy, uh, maybe making sure his uh, discard is loaded up for oh, a future Oh, I, I like rings. the timing on this. 
Marshadow yeah. let loose, essentially, as we mentioned before, the judge supporter just stapled onto a Pokemon, pulls it up, going to see himself four more cards this turn, but most importantly, disrupting Alex oh, yeah. and everything he had going in his previous turn. Now, granted, I still don't really feel too bullish about Andrew's chance to score something as crazy as a one-hit knockout right now, where he would need a lot of cards to be able to do that. And actually, if he might be precluded from having exactly what he needs to be able to pull it off, unless he hits something like another Rare Candy, Vuka Volt, uh, an Energy, uh, things like that. But with the Nest Ball going down, that basically just... Excludes that from any possibility. Be interested to see what Andrew eyes down. Maybe another attacker. Um, I yeah, cannot. We, that's a shaman. That is a shaman. Looks like, is that looks the rally like, back shaman? Yeah, that looks like rally back. Rally back sham, shaman off the nest ball. Rayquaza hitting for what I'll consider not quite enough. Yeah, not exactly the type of damage that you like to be dealing as a Rayquaza player, where these decks, they're capable of easily hitting 180 on the second turn, but a little bit of a clunkier start from Andrew. Not quite that he need, quite what he needed, but, you know, it's still good. It's not great, but it's definitely... Oh, and, and with all this stuff going down right his now... His entire previous turn is a race by Alex Kreckler and the very interesting and spicy two copies of Acerola, maybe so he can cycle through those jet punchers, picks up a damaged Buzzwell GX, promotes another one, except this one's carrying a beast energy, mm -hmm. and we are chucking bombs out here. We're Alex. chucking 110 damage bombs, my friend. And that is... A knockout. Yes, sir, and that's still just eyeing down the rest of Andrew's board. Even with the Vika Volt right there, it's not quite what Andrew needs, where Andrew might be repeating what he did in the last game, where he might have to resort to a little small KO just to keep Alex's board under control. We see the Mars Shadow promoted um, and a strong charge gearing up that Shaman. Rally back might be on our horizon here. Andrew switching gears, maybe going into those single prize attackers, playing a little bit of uh, a prize game himself. Guzman oh, and I, I, I love the approach here on just like every level. I, I like that he's setting himself up for the non-GX prize exchange. I like he's getting rid of that Prism Star. It's mixing it up a little bit from the last game where he went for the Slugma. Instead, he's going for the Deancey to limit Alex's damage output and protect that all-important Vika Volt where... By my math here, it looks like Alex is just not going to be able to have enough to knock that Vika Volt out with a Jet Punch and a Guzma. Great, great uh, analysis there, Deancey. Uh, we saw it targeted down earlier today, targeted down right here, uh, just barely keeping his Pokemon alive from those one-hit KOs. Alex got to come up with something. Ultra Ball's a way of fighting energy and a Rock Ruff. Gets Instruct Oranguru on the board. Um, no Mag Cargo yet, so he doesn't have uh, Voltron assembled, if you will. Uh, won't be able to draw immediately what he smooths over for quite yet, but uh, we're not far away from it. No. Oh, with Guzma going down, he doesn't quite have exactly what he wants to set up, but he's got something pretty convincing. He's got a lot of damage going down on this Vika Volt. Not really any healing answers here from Andrew, so... At some point, not this turn, but next turn, that Vika Volt's going down. And with the 30 going on the Grubbin, he's basically threatening to knock out both Vika Volt next turn. That, um, that is something Andrew's going to have to be uh, careful. So Alex really putting pressure on two different axes here. He can really pressure Andrew's attackers, and he can really pressure uh, kind of the engine of the deck, the Vika Volt, using that strong charge ability to quickly power up those attackers. Oh, yeah, and... One, and with Andrew playing his energy recycle right now, getting some of that energy floating back in the deck again, not just to strong charge, but to be able to draw later on in the game. He's got plenty of energy, plenty of outs as far as that goes, but, I mean, he's charging up his Vika Volt to get it out of the active position. That's, uh, that's a very interesting point. I believe we do see a Cynthia after Andrew uh, strong charges, as you mentioned, to the active might be looking to hard uh, hard retreat that into something, maybe a uh, maybe a shaman. Yeah, get maybe a little a bit shaman. more damage floating around. Maybe hit a second Vika Volt. Lots of options here, but it really just comes down to what the six off Cynthia is. It kind of interested to see Alex maybe 
double checking to make sure there aren't any spicy little secret options with that Mars Shadow. Keep in mind that it is a psychic Pokemon, and there is a minute chance, a very limited chance that he could pull off some sort of surprise knockout based off of that psychic type. So good precautionary play by Alex to go ahead and make sure that, yeah, this isn't something that's a probable threat. So ultimately I, I doesn't like have to hard retreat it. He gets the escape rope off of his Cynthia, uh, which is essentially makes your opponent switch, and then mm -hmm. you get to switch uh, reactively to what they do. Uh, most importantly, getting that Shaman oh, man. right back into the active. Oh, and the Lycan, Lycan Rock, Rock GX goes down. Very, very, very <laughs> hurtful play for for Andrew Martin there. Um, and a Lily stacking his, his hand back up, stacking Alex's hand back up oh, after man. that uh, bloodthirsty eyes. And we are going in right now. That's right. That wasn't the sort of impactful play that I really wanted to see there, though, with that bloodthirsty eyes, because there are only so many times you're going to get to use that ability in a game. And now that it's down, it's not going to really find a way back into his hand unless something bizarre happens, like a little bit of damage is dealt to it, and then Alex Ace rolls it. Like, that's just not even a really realistic chance here. But with the Volkner going down, suddenly these two Vika Volts, which were at risk of getting knocked out, they're... Not exactly safe, I wouldn't characterize it that way, but like, Alec, I'd say Andrew has a little bit more of a chance here. Yeah, he got a little bit of breathing room. Bloodthirsty Eyes uh, wasn't, wasn't really taken advantage of on Alex's side of the board. Andrew Martin now using Stormy Winds. Time to get some energy on the board. Time to get these rays rocking and rolling and uh, try to make a dent into Alex's board. And that was interesting. I didn't see an actual attachment from the discard. I guess he didn't have any any basic energy in it so he essentially stormy wins for nothing if i'm not mistaken although there is a little bit of a maybe unintentional benefit there because all those cards that andrew discarded are not really going to make that much of a difference so even if he stormy wins for no energy attachment and i i, I still kind of feel crazy saying that but at the same time he basically deck thinned by doing that yeah, it kind of worked out in that sense. And uh, if you recall, he did Energy Recycler not yep. too long ago. I believe That's it was right. the previous turn. So that may be playing an impact. Uh, maybe it thought he had an energy in there that he didn't and thought it was worth it. We're going to see a very, very costly hard yeah. retreat from that Vikavolt. Three energy hitting the discard. Rayquaza coming into the active. And that, that might have been a order of operations there, there because if, the, if we knew the retreat was coming, then... He could have delayed the Stormy Winds, got his energy when he knew it was there. But, I mean, Energy Recycler is a tough thing to keep up with at times. I mean, it's one of those little things that's so hard to, or so easy to take for granted, I should say, is that with Vika Volt and Rayquaza and just all this energy burning, you kind of think you should have an energy at some point. Yeah, it's not quite automatic. Uh, into Alex's turn, uh, Andrew has four prizes left, which that means Beast Ring is on. And we saw the Beast Ring come down. Now we're seeing an Ultra Ball finally getting that Magcarco online. He's going to smooth over, uh, put a Haymaker on top of his deck, and I believe he'll be able to instruct right into it. That's right, and we're going to see a repeat of what happened in the first game where with only two Beast Ring, Alex is setting up multiple attackers at the same time. We got that Buzzwool with the Beast on the bench. We've got the Buzzwool and the Active with three basic fighting, and both are looking pretty good right now with lots of options for Alex being able to knock out GXs, but keep in mind we still have those two Vika Volt at risk for getting knocked out on the same turn. That's a, um, a solid read there, and we mm. see Absorption, Absorption GX yeah. for the knockout with the Choice Band. That gets him just over the line to take the one-hit knockout on that Rayquaza, and the <laughs> pressure's back on Andrew. That uh, that little Shaman keeps coming to the active. He's it's doing his best to rally back, but uh, you know, he had a turn where he only hit for 30, and now it's going to be doing for, uh, going to be hitting for, I believe, 120 here. I'm uh, feeling like the name of the first attack better describes the current situation right now. Flippity flap, <laughs> where it's just kind of flapping around, maybe trying to set up something. But it feels like if Andrew is going to want to take over this game, maybe give himself the best chance of coming back and winning, then it will involve getting rid of that. Beast Energy Buzzwool, which is sort of follow-up on his earlier play by knocking out the Deancey. Get rid of the damage modifiers. Get rid of the things that increase Alex's damage so that 
essentially Andrew can be as limited as possible, give himself the best odds of winning. But we still got that smooth over, and we still got that instruct to guarantee Alex gets what he needs. All right, we see a GX knockout on Lycanroc GX. And Guzma, there he is. And that was just kind of a flurry <laughs> of cards. We saw Andrew uh, Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, Guzma. Guzma, the Lycanroc GX, bring the Shaman up. Or excuse me, bring up the Marshadow. Hard Retreat, the Marshadow, back into the Shaman. Rally back, knockout, bang, two prizes. Now over to Kreckler's turn. He flashes the Guzma with uh, with uh, Buzzwool GX with the Beast Energy, with the two fighting from the previous turn's Beast Ring. Guzma's up at Tapu Lele and limps across the finish line. I'm not even going to say limps across yeah. the Just crushes through the finish line. That's a little more accurate. That was a pretty dominating performance by Buzzwell. It's kind of impressive to see Buzzwell GX come back the same way that it did. We, we were talking about this as kind of a theme earlier where it's an old deck made new again, and it lost a lot of the things that made it really powerful in the last format, at the last few months of it, that is. But at the same time, it's doing a great job, and it's 6-0 and here at the Memphis Regional Championship. Alex is all but guaranteed to make day two, barring three losses in a row. And it's a pretty strong position, especially with a lot of decent matchups out there. Absolutely. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's what I'll call a soft lock. It's not a guarantee <laughs> he can lose the next three matches. Yeah. Uh, however, I would be very remiss that he doesn't find himself an ID somewhere in there to oh, get him yeah. see if a day, day two spot if it comes down to that. So uh, with that being said, Alex Kreckler storms through round six, 2-0 win. He is 6-0 and here in Memphis, as you mentioned, John. And uh, we're going to get him in the booth. That's right. So uh, we will be right back with Alex Kreckler, round six winner. Hello, and we are back at the Memphis Regional Championship for the Pokemon Trading Card Game with our round six winner, Alex Kreckler. You've had a great performance this tournament so far. You now have six wins. You have what's considered 18 match points, and you're basically guaranteed virtually guaranteed what my friend Kirk was saying earlier is a soft lock yeah. into the second day of play where we're only going to see anywhere from about 40 to 50 people. So first, maybe you can tell me a little bit about what your approach is in the next three rounds, how you want to I'm just, just I'm going to tie and win. I'm not going to do any tie and unless yeah. I lose the next two, I'll tie in at that <laughs> point. But I'm just going to play. Hopefully it's some good matchups and tie and get play to easy, win the tournament, yeah, basically. Easy top eight, yeah. Yeah, good deal, man. So Maybe kind of walk me through what inspired you to play Buzzwell Lycan Rock for this tournament. It's a deck that was known by people, still known by people, but yeah. a, a little more under the radar, especially after Sylveon won a regionals in Germany. So what, what was kind of your logic behind choosing it? Well, honestly, I thought it was a good play, but I hadn't tested a lot for this event because I've been playing a lot of it more expanded than yeah. this because I'm getting excited for that. So my friend sent me this list and played it, and I changed one card, played the list, and it's been doing well. Beautiful. So actually, from what you're telling me, there really wasn't a whole lot of like preparation that went into the decision. Not it's just you knew it was good, you trusted your friend, you trusted your play testing, yeah. and you decided to go for it. Yeah, that's so basically it. Maybe kind of tell me about some of the decks other than Vikavolt Rayquaza that you've played against so far. Uh, other than Vikavolt Quaza, I've only faced Malamar decks. You've only played five faced, Malamar in a row? I faced two Vikavolt Quazas, this one included, then oh, four okay. Malamar decks. Oh, okay. So there hasn't been a whole lot of variety in the decks, no, but you've, not a you've lot. had some pretty challenging matchups maybe so oh, definitely so do you feel like malamar is kind of an uphill battle for you i thought it was a very bad matchup okay. going into this and i don't know how i've won beat so it every time how did you approach beating it just playing the board and seeing how Pl things went stopping them from getting malamars out was the main strategy killing the inkes before they evolve was what i tried to do every time great so now that you're six and zero, you're playing with the big leagues right now for sure you've yeah. already been playing with the big leagues what are a couple decks that you're a little concerned about playing against Mal anything? Malamo is the main one going into this at this point. I don't know. Yeah. I, f I feel good against anything. Yeah, and you're thinking, okay, if I'm 4-0 against Malamar, I can basically hang with any deck. Yeah. Good deal, man. Well, hey, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Best of luck for the rest of the Thank tournament. Thank you very much. Maybe we'll see you again. Yeah, hopefully. And back to you all back at home.